Madam Deputy Speaker, the fact is that our rivers are dirty. They have been dirty for too long and have got dirtier. It is beyond a shadow of a doubt that we need them to be cleaned up. The Victorian sewage system was implemented because the Thames had become so toxic the Prime Minister of the time, Benjamin Disraeli, could no longer stand being in the chamber during the 1858 Great Stink. He said, The Thames had become a Stygian pool, reeking with ineffable and intolerable horrors. Outside now, the airs of Bazalgette are creating the super sewer, which would would reduce sewage overflow into the Thames uh, in central and east London, but not uh, in West London past Hammersmith, which is a point that my honourable friend from Brentford made very well. But it's the only such project in the UK. When the House passed the Climate and Ecological Emergency Motion three years ago, that should have challenged the water industry and the government to, to undertake radical change. We can no longer accept being the dirty man of Europe. It's fair to say the government have started to move on this. Well, they have brought this place reluctantly, in no small part, to the campaigning of the Honourable Member for Ludlow and the screeching public outrage when Conservative MPs were whipped to vote against a motion that called for the end of raw sewage discharges. We need more power into the hands of consumers so they can understand what is happening in their communities. But let's recap on the water industry numbers so we can see where there is space in the system for solutions. The water companies in England collectively invested £1 billion less in real terms last year than they did in 1991. The last 11 years, they handed £19 billion in dividends to shareholders. That's the financial leakage. Then there's the water leakage, 229,000 litres in 2021. Then, as we know, we have hundreds of thousands of sewage dumping events. In 2020, it was just shy of 400,000. In the same year, the average household in England saw £62 of their bills go as dividend. The Honourable Member of St Albans made the point very well about water company bosses receiving bonuses whilst these dumping events take place. Um, I just want to say the Rivers Trust have a brilliant website with an interactive map which allows people to zoom in on where they live and see where raw sewage is being discharged. It is disturbing to see how close to many of our communities the discharge taking place, even directly onto children's playing fields. We need to have a plan for raw sewage discharges that considers not only storm overflows but a creaking sewage system. There is a routine discharge of raw sewage into rivers and seas, not in the event of extreme weather from combined sewer overflows, but as a result of daily discharges. The fines levied against companies include the £90 million fine for Southern Water. But we're still seeing discharges by Southern Water, for instance, in Whitstable, which is affecting the fishing and tourism industries. It just shows the system isn't working. I agree with comments on both sides of the Chamber about delays in prosecution. Ministers need to make sure the Environment Agency puts real emphasis on bringing further prosecutions. The level of fines are not yet producing a change in behaviour in water companies and stopping raw sewage being routinely discharged. The word routine here really matters because it means every single day. While we've been debating, the water companies have been routinely discharging raw sewage, not because of extreme weather in the last hour, because of a sewage system that cannot cope with the level of demand being placed on it and the lack of investment in it. I'll resist the temptation to slip into a speech on sustainable urban drainage Uh, which we can pick up another time. The Environment Act 2021 sets out changes the way raw sewage will be reported on, the need for plans, but did not set out a timetable for when the scandal of raw sewage discharge would be brought to an end, nor did it set out any interim targets. The off-watch strategic priorities also fail to give that clear direction. We need to delve into the workings of the water industry that will influence the changes for water companies in the next pricing period. What changes are happening right now? They know that they do not have to invest in the same way until the next pricing period, because off what set the pricing controls and set the investment strategies. Though many water companies fell foul of the business plans in this period, I doubt that we will see a huge surge in action to close raw sewage outfalls and investment in treatment period until that next price period. The challenge is what we do about it now, and that really matters. What we discharge into our rivers is not always easily seen. We need a clear plan to understand how much will be stopped, how much will be properly treated, and how much will be carefully looked after in the future. Water companies discharged raw sewage into England's rivers 372,533 times last year, a slight reduction, as I said, on the previous year. But taking the last three years together, raw sewage was discharged over a million times for a duration of over 8 million hours. The Government's Storm Overflows Discharge Reduction Plan has been rightly criticised for its lack of urgency. Mark Lloyd, the Chief Executive of the Rivers Trust, said, I'm disappointed this plan lacks the urgency we do so desperately need. This plan is going to need strong input from civil society NGOs like the Rivers Trust. It's going to outpace the twinned climate and nature crises we're currently facing. 
We want to have rivers where people and wildlife can thrive, but the target timelines of plan are far too slow. I want to see this in my lifetime. I don't know how old the CEO is, but that's probably a considerable length of time. That is a considerable length of time, then. <laughs> um, Data released by the EA show that the 10 water companies covering England were releasing raw sewage into waterways for hundreds of thousands of hours in 2021. Um, the the, the 372,533 spills were recorded only on those overflows where event duration ones are in place, which is just 89%. So the actual figure is considerably higher. More than 60 discharges a year from an overflow are considered too high and should trigger an investigation. On average, 14% of discharge from 10 water companies passed that limit. In one event last year, 8.7 million gallons were also discharged into the River Calder above Wakefield. The fine was just £7,000. Water companies in England are under investigation by the regulator Ofwat and the EF. They admit, admitted they may have illegally released untreated sewage into rivers and waterways. The investigation will involve more than 2,200 sewage treatment works, with any company found breaching their legal permit liable to enforce an action, including fines or prosecutions. And fines can now be up to 10% of annual turnover civil case or unlimited in criminal proceedings, and I welcome that. Um, I, I, ju I just want to um, finish with a couple of points. The SPS also states that off should enhance the quality of the water environment. But recently, we've seen that beaches around the Tees estuary and along the coast of North Yorkshire saw a huge rise in dead and dying crabs and lobsters last autumn. The government launched what it called an investigation in January. Dogs were found also um, falling ill after being walked on the beaches. In, the Feb in February, the government put out a press release announced the mass death of sea creatures and these dog illnesses was caused by an algal bloom. And I'll make a slight um, segue here. Um, the, the minister and I are uh, uh, of an association right back to when I first got elected. And one thing that I learned from the minister, it's always good to be appropriately dressed for debates. That's why I've worn this tie today. Uh, I noticed that the minister is dressed in a very algal bloom green, so I'm not sure whether she's going to refer to that in her closing remarks. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there has been a rapid increase in the population of algae that can release toxins into the water and affect other wilds. That's what the government claims. But no data was published or evidence. And an algal bloom in October or in February seems from unlikely to impossible, as blooms require high temperatures and clear water, and the sea is cold and turgid uh, in Northumbria and off the Tees. Um, no bloom had also been noticed by the fishing community. So the local fishing community and anglers commissioned an independent investigation by the marine pollution consultant Tim Deere-Jones. And using FOIs, he found the government had only used satellite data as its basis for its judgment that it was algal bloom. But he also found, more astonishingly, that the levels of toxic pollutant called pyridine in the northeast um, in crabs tested by the government was 74 times higher than those found in crabs caught in Cornwall. So I'll ask the minister whether she's now going to bring together agencies, including Ofwat and the Environment Agency, as well as her own department, to get to the truth of the matter. The strategic policy statement isn't just about protecting the environment and stability industry, but also protecting consumers. The government claims that its number one priority is the cost of living crisis. But there is a postcode lot lottery on social tariffs, no consistency between companies on the financial support offered to consumers and no legal minimum. The government has not even put a statutory duty on water companies to provide that support or on off what to require it. This is the weakest possible framework by the government. Average water bills rose by 1.7% to £419 in April 2022. However, there are significant regional variations with the average bill rising by 10.8% in one water company area. People are struggling, and a water bill can be the straw that breaks the camel's back for many households. Thank you.